I changed the name of uh, my project just because before it was SRH or Sexual and Reproductive Health Education and Skill Building Programs, but there were um, quite can you pass me? Mm-hmm. Thank you. There were quite a bit of uh, changes that happened throughout the year, as I'm sure happened to all of your projects. Um, or if it wasn't with your projects, just things that happen in life in general that may throw you off. Um, in April, I was playing basketball and I tore my ACL and I um, had physical therapy sessions before and then surgery here and physical therapy sessions after. So that took a lot of time away from my um, project because at first I wanted to work with um, Fundacion Sierra Navia Hoven, which is a non for profit uh, organization in Serenavia, which is way on the west side of the city near the airport, and I was hoping to immerse myself in the community through three programs in specific. Programa Jovenes de la Esquina, which um, social workers every afternoon go out and do home visits with teens who are not enrolled in school, who may have drug or alcohol um, abuse issues. Colegio Don Enrique Alvear is a high school uh, connected with the foundation, and I was working there uh, as an English teaching assistant twice a week, um, and then Programa Maternidad Adolescente. And uh, through my accident uh, with my knee, as well as a shortage of funds with the foundation, I ended up really only working with the Programa Maternidad Adolescente. And um, I asked Mason if he could, I don't know where Mason went, but um, <laughs> there's a little clause in our contract that mentions extensions or renewal of the year. And thankfully, I was able to, or Mason and Antonio petitioned on my behalf for a two-month extension. So I'll be here until February to hopefully um, tie up the loose ends of my project. But uh, so instead of working with three parts of the foundation, I only really worked with Programa Maternidad a Sente. And then once a week, uh, I would, I was, I am a, currently a teacher's assistant at Universidad Alberto Hurtado, which. I know one of you students are yeah, you are studying at that university, um, and the course is poverty and development. And then in mid October, a bunch of students from California arrived, and their course is on human rights. So I read all the readings and correct their papers, and the the, lect- the readings have a lot to do with my um, work in Serenavia. And uh, during my time with the Programa Maternidad de los Sente, I worked with Melody Sid, who um, is in charge of the program, and she is the only uh, contracted worker at the foundation for the program, and the rest of us are volunteers, and so our schedules uh, are very flexible. Um, there are th- three other volunteers that are mid-30s to late 50s that have flexible schedules so they can only come to the foundation once or twice a week and then they come Monday afternoons for the reunions or um, with the whole team but because um, Fulbright generously gives me all this free time to do my project I was there Monday through Friday except for when I was at the university uh, working as a TA and this presentation will mostly be about a grant proposal Melody and I worked on. Uh, it, the, I don't know if any of you are familiar with Fundacion Colunga, but it's a foundation that grants funds and training to other foundations who are starting up new initiatives. Um, it's Chilean, and the, the contest or the grant that they had is Emprende el Viaje, the, um, Descubre el Corazón de tu Proyecto. And so I basically worked with Melody during September and October uh, apart from our home visits with the teen moms to develop this grant proposal um, in hopes of receiving funds for next year, 20, 2018. Um, so the first thing they basically ask you is to describe the social issue that's happening uh, in the community. And in Cerro Navia, there's an adolescence, adolescent pregnancy rate of 20.3%, uh, which it means one in five teens uh, ages of 13 through 18 are pregnant or teen uh, or mothers Um, and this leads to there are causes and effects uh, due to the the pregnancy so the first is just a lot a lack of familial support many of the teen moms um, if they're if they're living with their families uh, or their boyfriends or their boyfriend's families 
their parents are working during the day or during the evening and they don't have those central figures um, to rely on and then due to pregnancy they um, leave school leave elementary school if they're in seventh or eighth grade when they are pregnant or have their their children or high school and so they don't have their professors um, to rely on um, like I'm sure all of we right here being Fulbrighters we have our mentors and things like that that we rely on um, and then they also the conditions of vulnerability within the community there are also high drug and alcohol abuse um, rates so a member or members of their family or the girls themselves may um, be I guess partake in these activities um, just because they're available within the community and um, and then so so many of the girls, if they are, are not living with their families, they are living with their boyfriends or their boyfriend's parents, and they depend economically on um, the, the, their boyfriends or their families. Um, and then they do, we, ha we see a low level of participation with, in school um, in putting the children in um, Hardinas as well as the, municipal, the governmental programs. Um, and I can go into detail on why that is but so the intervention we wrote about uh, for the grant was to amplify individual accompaniment so home visits uh, to complement group visits when I studied abroad here three years ago I volunteered with the foundation and the main focus of the program was group visits so once a week the five to ten teen mothers or pregnant uh, teens would come together for three hours, uh, once a week, like I said, and basically work on uh, manualidades, so art projects, um, and then they would also use that time to just uh, talk about how they're doing, as well as they would all have uh, share onces at the end of that. Um, and even leaving my t or leaving Chile during that time, I, re I was realizing that those group visits aren't addressing um, the underlying issues that a lot of these teens have it's just it's a it's a nice safe space it's a time for them to get away from um, being most of the women spend all day inside with their kids it's a three hours during the week when they can go and socialize with other teen girls but there are a lot more problems than just um, than a, a group social activity can can try to work at um, and then the other part of the intervention intervention is uh, training for the volunteers so myself included I don't have a degree in social work or psychology or any of those um, types of studies you would need to uh, degrees or I have not studied the subjects that are necessary to work with these mothers um, and and really tackle the the issues that many of them um, face And we defined a general objective and then uh, four specific objectives. The first is to really bridge the their, their, their mothers, but they're also teens, like I said, 13 through 18. And a lot of times becoming a mother puts your, your, your youthful years on the back burner and they don't get to enjoy that or really understand that you can bridge the two together and celebrate both, being a mother and being a teen. So. That, that's really um, the general objective as well as, um, what does it say? Yeah, just integrating their maternity and their adolescent development with their children. And then the four specific objectives that we hope to, will let us achieve the general goal uh, described above are to first um, work with the mothers on, uh, regarding the questions they have in, uh, regarding their children. So um, is it okay if um, I, I, I don't wanna, so one of the main issues is that they are reluctant to put their children in the infant, Hardina's infantiles, because if, they, if the children can't talk or if they can't speak yet, the moms aren't sure what's, ha what's going on during the, day, during the time in the daycare. So they'll wait until their children can start speaking to say, hey, this other, um, the Tia, like you know, uh, hit me, or the other child took away, hit me. So th that's the main preoccupation or preoccupation of the teen mothers. Um, so they have questions like that, and 
our hope is to have uh, trained and capable volunteers that are able to um, assure them that uh, putting your child in daycare is a great way for them to learn social skills as well as um, uh, maybe start the child off their half day and have the mother meet all of the tea as there's ways um, that they don't have to be afraid to get their children into daycare. Um, the second uh, specific objective is to get the teen mothers really connected with the community. So that's either through the foundation or the other programs uh, within Serenavia. So Chile Crece Contigo is the governmental um, maternity uh, focus project and many of the women don't take advantage of that because when they do see the matrona they are reprimanded for a, in, uh, not properly using anti-conceptivos um, birth control uh, and so our our what really what really what we really hope to do is bring them back into that network um, and show them that there are a lot of resources that they can take advantage of within the community. And the third uh, gen uh, specific objective is to get them start have them start to think about their futures. And our we don't want to impose on them um, any of these objectives, but to work with them and, and, and ask them these questions. What do they see as their future or for, for themselves and for their children? And work with them to create a plan so that they can um, achieve those uh, plans. And the final one is we do, I really think that the group visits are, or the group encuentros are really important because as volunteers, I don't, like I said, I don't want to impose what I think is best, but if, they, if a teen mom can speak with another teen mother about her experiences, she's going to listen to that teen mother way before she's going to listen to me. So the other is to develop the spaces um, where the teen moms can get together and share experiences because they are valuable. Um, the three phases um, of incorporation are invitation. Um, in early September, we had a recruitment event where everyone in the foundation, I believe there were about 35 um, workers, they're, they're usually social workers or psychologists that work in the foundation, went door to door and just spoke with community members about the program, specifically the program, Programa Maternidad Adolescente, but also just letting the community know about the foundation because it does have a lot of programs that they should take advantage of. Um, so that's the invitation. Also, um, we have contacts at five of the clinics who regularly send my boss, Melody, the program, and who is in charge of the program, lists of names, telephone numbers, and addresses of these women. So part of a big part of my job in the afternoons is going door to door um, with these lists and tracking down these women, which there are a lot of issues um, going in Torino. A lot of times the address isn't, our, the address isn't, my address is, is aren't marked <laughs> um, and so there's a lot and there's no doorbells in Serenavia so you just shouting a lot of the times um, <laughs> asking the mailman if, if one comes by or the neighbor um, trying to track down these women and a lot of times those lists aren't um, thorough so maybe there's a girl who's 25 on it okay we just went to visit her house and she can't join the program but she, then we do take advantage of the time to tell her about the foundation so those are the types of invitations um, that occur and we just basically use that first visit to tell them about the program and, and what our hopes are for it and then we get, ask them if they would like to join us. Um, also their availability. Um, the second is uh, strengthening the links between the teen mom and the volunteer that she works with. So ever since we started putting this proposal together, the three volunteers that are, like I said, between their 30s and 50s have started the individual home visits. And we want them to have a really great relationship. So they are usually the ones that um, go and meet the women for the first time. Because uh, Melody and I don't want it to be us who go and then there has to be a second transition between um, who will really be going into their homes and speaking with them and Melody and I leave. I leave back for the States, but Melody works in the office and doesn't do 
the home visits like the volunteers do. And it, it, it's, it, it is important to mention that the volunteers are from Serenavia um, themselves, so they have that perspective. Um, and then the third is increasing the links um, with the community. Um, all of this is a process and we're always trying to evaluate what we're doing and how things are working. Um, and then the other methodology, Estrategia Metodologica is uh, training, monthly training for us as volunteers as a, as a group because like I said, we are working with lives um, of the teen women. This is not just a fun group activity or summer camp. It's real issues that they have and we want to be the best um, uh, at our jobs and assisting them with their uh, evaluating their needs and finding uh, solutions. So monthly, uh, we also said that monthly training sessions were necessary, so we've started to do those. And now I have some photos of the three phases. So I am currently in charge of the Facebook for Programa Maternidad Adolescente. And um, right now we have 60 friends and they're all teens, uh, pregnant teens or teen mothers of Cerro Navia. And, but right now only, only 10 are participating with the program. Um, usually once a week, it's been quite a while, I'll post something relating to gender equality, um, matern maternal health, um, what's going on in the community, things like that. Um, and what I have found is that they really react to the photos that we um, upload, not so much the cool videos that I think are really interesting. But, <laughs> um, so that this is one way to get them involved with the foundation, just sh share with them the Facebook link, which is connected to the, the main uh, Fundacion Serenavia Joven and the other programs um, so that they can learn about those. Um, for Fiestas Patrias, we um, invited all of the participants in the program to the center, which is Avenida Costanera Sur 8710, which is really quite literally a five minute ride to the airport if you can picture a map of Santiago. Um, and the foundation has events like these for basically every major holiday. Um, so they are invited to participate in that. Um, once a month, um, the, or the, with the group, when the group visits were occurring more frequently, uh, we would also have visits for all of the teen moms once, once a month. So, uh, the foundation was, the program was partnered with, a uh, Colegio Cumbres and high schoolers and professor, and one of the professors would come and they actually built a like a toy library and there's a book there's a children's bookshelf but unfortunately the so that was um they implemented this last year and when i worked at the foundation from march through june um this was where i would work i would work at the found the center in lo duarte but because of um, funding they had to sell the property so it's pretty sad because a lot of um, the kids, when they would come for the visits um, or to for just to check in with us, they would run straight to the to the room, um, and they it, it was open and available to them. Which um, when we do the home visits, you definitely notice a lack of toys and a lack of children's books. Um, these are just some photos of um, that. This was of the same event, and like I said. The program and the foundation like to have celebrations once a month for whatever is taking place that month. So during the month of August, it was cele uh, like Children's Children's Day, Children's Month was in August, and we had an event at one of the centers. And the teen moms, we brought in um, like didactic games, like you can see in the back, Connect Four, and they were a lot of. I really enjoyed um, playing. <laughs> <laughs> And then I'm in, I'm on the right in the back, but while the mothers are able the, playing the games and conversing among, amongst themselves, um, the volunteers and I are um, taking care of the kids and, and making sure that the moms have that time to relax and not preoccupy. Yeah. Uh, 
for their children. Not preoccupied. Worry. Worry. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, like I said, the foundation has a lot of services, and one of them is uh, they, there's a kinesiologist or a physical therapist that comes to the foundation, as well as a phenolo phonologo, phonologist, to, to actually come. Um, and same thing with the physical therapist. And it's donation-based, so community members, if they have a uh, prescription from a doctor for sessions, I think that's the right way to say it, um, they can be attended to for free. And I've uh, three of the children um, in the program see a phenolo a phonologo. Um, but uh, this was in... It was October, the uh, phonologist, phonologo, um, gave a presentation on um, what the women can do in the, in the home to strengthen the children's linguistic capabilities um, and get them talking. And then every Monday afternoon, we have our group meetings. And so once a month, like I said, we have started to have um, training. So Oscar, who is the director of education at the foundation, came and gave a, a presentation on... Um, education and how there are different ways of learning and a lot of the team or everyone has a different style of learning and as volunteers we need to recognize these to understand the ways in which that the teen moms learn and these are the four results that we hope to achieve uh, that that specifically tie back to the specific objectives so the first is that the mothers really preoccupy about the, the health and well-being of themselves and their children, um, taking advantage of those the health services in the community and going to the monthly visits at the, the consultorios. The second is to um, hopefully reintegrate them into the school system, whether that's themselves, if that's their plans, or um, the 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 daycares or preschools for their children. The last is to, or the third to last, is to incorporate, um, a, a lot of times the women, um, the, you see a lot of violence, um, whether it's violence within their relationships um, or with j f violence within the family. Um, and uh, the, the third is really, educating them on educating them about you know what is and is not is and is not acceptable in relationships um, from, uh, friendships uh, with family or intimate relationships and the fourth is to like I said so that they participate in the the groups um, to share experiences um, and during my the next two months, these are just a couple of questions that I hope to um, find some answers to, but what type of training do the workers with Chile Crece Contigo receive? Because like I said, a lot of the women don't like participating in this program. The second is to uh, understand why the teen moms don't take advantage of a lot of the, the benefits of the municipality. What I've heard is that if they take themselves out of um, the, fam the family unit, their parents will stop receiving benef uh, monetary benefits by having them it within that unit. And so that means that they don't leave and, and declare themselves independent with their children so that they, they don't take advantage of um, certain benefit, different benefits that the, or resources that the government provides for, for teen, teen mothers. And then the last um, question is, can the program function with just volunteers? Like I said, the foundation closed down one of the centers and, an, and another program, and the way things look right now, the, the teen mom group um, may not be around next year, at least without, um, or Melody said my boss will probably be let go for next year, So, um, which is very unfortunate because I do think that you need to have someone in charge who has a full-time job and is organizing all of this it would be wonderful if it's sustainable with volunteers. Um, so that's my job with the next two months. Um, and that's and I would like to thank Fulbright as well as my um, as well as Melody Sit at the foundation for having me 
um, work with her every day and my professor at Universidad Alberto Hurtado who has allowed me to join in on the classroom discussions and think more prof profoundly about the social issues that are taking place in Serenavia. Thank you. There's Programa Emprende Mama, and so that was actually one of the parts of the um, this grant application we had to do was to describe other offers that are being made to the, whether they're public or private, to the teen mothers and describe the differences and why our initiative would be better. But so um, in Santiago, there's Programa Emprende Mama that it's just, um, it's basically, it's group visits centered in, in, at, in maternity, but it's uh, not just teen moms, it's all uh, mothers. And then there's um, La Vicaria de Pastoral Social Caritas, um, and it's uh, adolescent paternity, so the, the fathers. Um. Cool. 